Hi there, friends. How do I know that I'm competitive for a group leader or faculty position? I've been asked that numerous times, including also on this channel. And I think this is a question that inevitably comes up if you are deciding to stay in academia. And here are my thoughts on that. But first of all, not all academic jobs are the same. So of course, there are some that have more research focus, more, some others have more of a teaching focus, some, some are mixed, some are more geared at undergraduates, some are more geared at graduate students. And so whatever applies to you, you will need to adjust some of the things that I say in the following. But what I'm gonna talk about in this video is about a group leader position or faculty position at a university with typically more like a research focus. So there are a couple of things that you can sort of check on to see if you are competitive for such a position. And the first one, of course, is your publication profile. And most importantly, do you have a clearly recognizable portfolio of publications? You don't need to have published in Nature or Science, but you should have published in recognized, good, reputable journals in your subject area. And all of those publications together, they should form a corpus that is sort of recognizable as addressing a certain point so, so that you stand for something basically in your community. That is what I mean by a clearly recognizable profile. Some other indications of that having happened is that you have, for example, been invited to meetings, to certain sessions to report on your results or to departmental seminars or that you've been invited to participate in some international networks. Those are all indications that people recognize what you have done. You stand for a certain topic and therefore you get invited for this. If this is the case, it really means that you have literally a research program all already underway and therefore you would be qualified for such a position. Now, of course, there are certain shades to this, right? You know, maybe you have already 50 papers or something. Um, or maybe you have only five. But the point is, is that all contributing to a corpus of uh, output that is clearly recognizable um, on a certain topic? You know, I mean, this is different from five publications on, on a clearly defined topic is better than having five publications on completely different topics that basically don't gel together to produce answers to a certain question that you want to pursue in your career, right? So, I mean, um, there could be situations where these five papers on different topics could also be an advantage, but generally not in the beginning. In the beginning of a, of a career, it's more important that you focus on something and you get recognized for something. Now, connected to that, to this development of a, of a research program or this incipient research program, if you will, is do you have a pretty clear vision of where this should go in terms of research. Now, this is not as obvious as you think. I think some people really have this vision of where this field should go, what their role in this process is, what should be the next steps that need to be done. And so if you can say yes to that, I think that you are quite far along in this uh, development towards a group leader or faculty position because I think it's not as easy as you think it is. And because what's required is that you have um, an overview of what's already done, and you need to also have the ability to recognize where the gaps are. And that is actually not so easy for like, let's say an entire field. Let's say soil ecology or mycorrhizal ecology or some subset of ecosystem ecology. If you, if, if you have a very clear vision of where this should go, I think this is worth a lot. If you critically ask yourself, do you have that? And you can answer with yes, then that's a very good sign. The next point is clearly leadership skills. Now you may not already formally lead a group because you're asking yourself if you would be competitive for such a position, but maybe there, you are on a stage on the way there, you know, maybe as a postdoc or maybe already as a PhD student in the final stages of your PhD, you have assembled a small group of bachelor students, undergraduate students that work with you, that you advised, um, or even master students, or perhaps, perhaps you already advised or co-advised some uh, doctoral students or even um, early stage postdocs. So that already means that you have been able to, at least at some level, manage such a small team. And that speaks to your leadership skills. 
But there's other ways to show that. Maybe you have initiated or co-initiated some international network, some scientific network, or maybe you have um, really had some major input on some development in a scientific society. Maybe you started a working group or co-organized a working group or some sort of a session in that society. So there's very many ways how you can basically articulate um, to yourself if you have that sort of leadership skill already or you are, if you're developing in this direction. And that is also a very important ingredient if you can clearly say yes to that. A big one is always uh, having secured grant funding for obvious reasons because it means you have been able to convince um, people or agencies to give you money to support your work. Now very often you may not have that and that may be actually a major source of of doubt whether you're qualified, but it's often understood depending on the system you're in that you couldn't have secured some major national, federal or whatever funding. But there's many other ways you can also demonstrate that you are on that way. You know, maybe you have secured a, a scholarship or a fellowship for yourself, or maybe you have gotten funding from some local agency to do some some local environmental work, for example, or perhaps you have secured a travel grant or yeah, some, some other smaller source of funding, but at least it shows that you have the capability to write things up and to succeed in getting that money. Now, even in a research intensive institution, you are basically expected to have some teaching experience in order to have a group leader position. And of course, teaching is an important part of an academic job. And you know, you may not have had experience for an entire course, but you may have contributed to the teaching of part of a course. You may have given guest lectures or you may have organized lab sessions and uh, that all counts. Uh, you may have taken some courses at the university about teaching, so that would also be helpful to that particular course. And don't forget that mentoring is also a form of teaching, so maybe you have had the small circle of bachelor students that you have mentored and helped with their theses and that also would count towards that. Now it's always kind of difficult sometimes to judge yourself, you know, going through all these points that I mentioned so far where along this trajectory you really are. So it's very good to get some outside input as well from your mentor of course or your mentors or your group of trusted friends. Um, just ask them, what do you think? Am I already there yet or do, you, do I need you know, to do more work in one of these points that I mentioned above? That is going to be very important to get that outside assessment because in my own experience I've, I've seen several times where people didn't think they were ready but it was pretty clear that they were ready. All they needed was just that push and to be told. So I think um, seek that input and maybe you'd be surprised. Now, a final word, <laughs> it is very, very tempting, <laughs> notice myself, uh, to compare yourself to others. You know, what are some of these people that have gotten some of these positions that you would like to get? And um, you got to be very careful with that because it is not helpful to um, obsessively compare yourself to others because there is going to be always people that are better than you in, in something at least seemingly, and um, well, basically doing that too much just leads to unhappiness. Uh, also, you don't ever really know the whole story uh, behind somebody. You only see certain sides of certain people. And basically for any given position, it is just really utterly pointless to worry about the particular competition that you may be facing. Uh, and that is for several reasons. So first of all, it, it is pointless to worry about it since it's simply not in your control. What you can control is your own portfolio, what, what you can bring to the table. That is in your control. What other people do is not in your control. But the more important reason why that is pointless to worry about is that there's so many idiosyncrasies in all of these searches for poster positions and group leader positions and faculty positions. You don't really know what the, what the search committee really wants. And, Often the search committee is definitely not of the same opinion. There's like different factions within the <laughs> search committee, for example. And so it is just simply not worth worrying about it. It is not 
always true that the person with like the most publications and so on wins because it is also a matter of fit to a certain position, a matter of personality. Uh, so it's it's much more complicated. And so yeah, that, that just limit that kind of thinking is just simply not productive. What you should worry about is really yourself. Make sure that um, you go in your mind through these points that we mentioned above. Also make sure you seek the input from um, people that are well disposed towards you, like your mentors, that are constructive and critical nevertheless. Yeah, and I hope with that, that gave you a good indication of whether you'd be competitive for such a position or not. If you have additional points that I have forgotten to mention, please do let me know in the comments. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.